Hello friends and welcome back to Stay to Write. It's been quite some time since I last posted any video in the React JS series, but today is the day when I post a new video. So I was recently going through a lot of services and applications that have been created around the React JS ecosystem or in general around web development, which can be used by developers to quickly create any application, maybe in terms of getting help in creating components or the backend. and i thought of let's share about these services with you guys as well because you are also working on react js and developing different projects and applications so the service that we will talk about in this particular video is app right as you can see on the screen app right is an open source platform that enables you to set up authentication database storage and serverless functions for your application so all you have to do is create a react project create your user interface implement the business logic and the backend part can be taken care by app right and while i was going through the documentation of app right i found it pretty simple so i thought let's create a video where i will follow this documentation side by side and set up a basic authentication system in the react js application and share it with you guys so that you guys can also get a hands on experience for this and you can try it yourself as well so let's get started so as you can see on the screen the app right website is already open you can access it on app right.io it has a free plan a pro plan and a enterprise level plan so we will not be worrying about the enterprise or pro level although the pro level is also just 15 dollars a month but today for this video and in general for projects that you are creating maybe in your college or in general for your hobby project you can simply use the free tier or the starter package in the starter package you get a lot of things about 75000 monthly active users can be handled in the pro membership about 200k monthly active users can be handled so if you are planning to launch some product which you are serious about maybe you know starting up a startup you can simply go with the pro plan and i think 15 dollar is worth it when it comes to the features that app right is providing i'm not promoting app right in any sense but i found it really impressive that the services that it is providing right so let's quickly go through the documentation in the documentation you will find what all technologies it support flutter next react swelt next view angular and then apple and android we will go with react js and this is the basic start with react tutorial where they have shared how you can set up the authentication system using app right and it's pretty simple to follow i have just gone through the documentation and i found it pretty simple let's see if it is that simple when you implement it or not so the first step says head to the app right console i've already logged in so let me just open up the console i might have to log in again yeah so i used github login uh, to directly sign up for this particular service you can also do that once you sign up you will be asked a couple of questions like you know enter the organization name and organization id will be generated for you so basic sign up related steps i think you can easily handle it and this is how the console looks like okay so we are logged into the console If this is your first time using AppRight, create an account and create your first project. Okay, so we have to create a project. All right, so okay, this is create a project. The name of the project. Let's keep it basic auth because we are trying out authentication. Regions, uh, Frankfurt. Everything else is notify me. So I think we have just one option. Frankfurt selected. Okay, create. Let's see what is next. Create. Okay so the project has been created uh okay yeah so the project got created now what then under add a platform add a web app and host name should be local host then we have to create a react project this is using white which will be done using vs code on the local setup so uh okay so over here once the project is created in app right we have to select this web hmm basic name let's just go with basic auth host name local host like mentioned in the documentation next all right get the sdk choose the preferred method of installation either it can be npm or cdn i think we will go with the npm way because we are creating a react application uh what we have to do over here you can skip the optional steps okay so let's go with skip optional steps let's not get into the details because like i said you know we're just creating a basic starter project with react js to set up authentication and we just want to see how easy it is to use app right if it is easy and if i feel like that okay this is a good service then i might be using it for creating more applications or more simple projects and i will share that with you guys as well okay okay so next it is saying that create a react project i already have vs code open up over here i've created a directory react white sample but inside of this i will create the project so by just simply running this particular command it will create a project with name my app you can change that if you want to i'm going it with the same name so it is done and it says now run cd my app which is already 
enclosed in the command so i don't have to run it again npm install let me just quickly run npm install to install all the packages that we need and then we will run npm run dev to run the white project although it's a simple project we will quickly jump into whatever app write documentation is saying and change the files okay so npm install is done the project is ready this is how the source app.jsx looks like this is a standard boilerplate code that comes with white installation so you don't have to worry about this and I don't have to talk about it, right? So let's head to the documentation once again. It says install app right. Okay, now we have to install the app right SDK. Let's quickly do that. NPM. Oops. Let's just copy this. Okay, and run it over here. NPM install app right. Installing done. Now we should have an entry in the package.json. We have app right. Cool. What next? import app right okay find your project's id in the settings page all right so where is the settings page okay over here we have settings here we have the project id cool create a new file source lib app right dot js add the following code to it replace your project id with your project id okay understood app right dot js source lib let's copy this head to vs code in the source let's create a folder lib and inside this, let's create a file app write.js and paste the code that we have copied from app write documentation, get the project ID from the consoles and just paste it over here. I think this is done. This should be the file that would be setting up the connection with the app write cloud server maybe because that's where the magic will happen. The authentication, everything is taken care by app write. So we don't have to worry about it. We just have to send request to app write. I'm assuming that let's see how it goes. Next what create a login page, add the following code to app.jsx. Okay. Let's copy this and paste this. Let's quickly see what this code has importing react, which is fine. Account and ID is imported from app, right? Okay. Then we have a couple of state variables, logged in user, email, password, name. This must be the form fields. Then we have a async function login, which is taking email and password and it is calling a API function, create email session of the app, right? API, right? And it is sending email and password. And then based on whatever we are getting from this, we are updating the logged in user state and we are setting this account dot get. Maybe, you know, this is getting us the information of the uh, session that we are creating for any user after authentication. Uh, in the JSX we have, okay, if the user is logged in, then we are saying logged in as we are fetching the name and showing it otherwise not logged in. Perfect. We have a form three input fields, email, password and text. Each of them has a on change event handler to update the state variables, email, password, name. Okay. Then we have a couple of buttons, one button, two button, three button. Uh, do we have more? No, three buttons. The first button is for login, calling in the login function that we have defined above. Next, we have a button for register. Okay. In this on click, we are doing, we are calling in another API function, create Okay, so for creation of the new account, we are using unique method of the ID and we're sending an email password and name. And then once we are getting response from this, we are doing login again, calling in the function that we have created above. The next button is for logout. And on click of this, we are again triggering another API method, delete session for deleting the session. And we're also updating the logged in user state variable. Cool. So this is a simple form where we are triggering a couple of API calls for the app, right? API, and we are registering a new user, logging in a user. If that is what the user wants to do. And we have a logout button to destroy or delete the session that we created when the user logged in or registered. So let's see how it works or what is the next step in the documentation. Uh, all set, run your project with npm run dev. This is this hyphen hyphen open port. Okay. So you can use this command or you can simply use the command that uh, white provides where it runs on a different port, but we will go with this command only. Let's just follow the documentation completely. Okay. So we have got a simple form email, password, name, and a uh, couple of buttons. So let's open up the developer console so that we can take a look at the network calls that are happening open the network tab and let's start. So over here, let me enter just an email. Abhishek at the red study email done. Let me enter some password, my name and uh, let's click on register. Okay. So a request call went to account. What was the header? What was the payload for this? Okay. It was unique ID email 
password abhishek name and the response that we got was this uh, we got a id created at updated at name blah 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 so much information good then the email uh, api call was triggered where the payload was email and password okay so this one would be the login one i think uh, which is triggered after the registration is done and in response of this we're getting a lot more information the ip the os code the os name client type etc which is very good the country name okay the brand name of the device and the device name wow so we're getting a lot of information from the login api okay okay so let's try log out now if i do log out okay the user got logged out not logged in and if i try to log in again okay let me just clear this network section login email api is triggered this another one this account one is also getting triggered i'm not sure what this is for but this email one is triggered and it is getting us all the information and this is the id that we are getting from this email one and this account one is getting us a different id okay so i'm not sure which will be the id that i can use maybe you know if i'm creating any application i want to uniquely identify the user that has been created which id should i use so i'm not sure of that uh in the code we are setting in this account.get okay so we are pulling out this name information from this logged in user which we are getting from this account.get so let's just remove this name over here let's see the entire object that we are getting okay we'll have to use stringify to convert it into string so that we can see how it looks json.stringify and now we can see the components of this object so this is the id we have i think i'm assuming that you know this is the unique id that we get let's just copy it and see let me just register another user and see so this one is for abhishek okay let me just try and log out and try another registration v at the rate site dot com everything same okay just study tonight okay and uh, let me just try register new user got registered and this is how the login id looks like let me just copy this again let's just see if we log in again uh, this is the same id that we should be getting for abhishek okay remove the name because this is not something that we are sending login and i'm getting this which is the same id right so this is the id that we are getting so this is sort of a unique id that is getting generated for each account uh, you can use it if you are separately having some mongodb setup or some other database in which you are storing the data for your business logic that you are implementing and you just want appright for authentication system so you can use these unique ids generated by appright to identify the data that you want to store in your database related to a user right so i think yeah that's cool okay so one thing left let's see how in appright we can see this data right because they are storing it they have the entire access okay so we are seeing a couple of things in the dashboard 1.88 kb bandwidth three requests cool okay uh, nothing much over here okay authentication is showing one user but we have created two users um okay still it's showing one user no worries let's go to auth okay over here we have this two users this is the unique user id okay we can see it from here as well uh, i think this is the same thing that we copied yeah this is the same thing right so this is the dashboard i think i like the dashboard you have the list of the user that have been created and the status is unverified so maybe they are also sending in some email for verifications i'm not sure i'll have to check my email for that uh, i'm assuming they should be because i think that's very basic so yeah with that we have set up successfully a uh, authentication system for a react js application you can use it anywhere you want to maybe you are creating a to do application or you are creating any e-commerce application or any project that you are working on this can be your authentication system and you don't have to do much you just have to create the user interface for your login and registration form and you can use the appright api to take care of the entire authentication system how cool is that i like it and i think i will give try to these features as well databases you can create a database wow you have functions you can host functions as well create functions okay you can create functions for node js php as well is supported python wow i like this and then there is storage as well buckets you can create so for study tonight we have our bucket hosted on s3 but if you are getting everything like this on one service and i think the service is also pretty simple to use i like it already 
and with that we have come to the end of this video this is just the beginning of the season 2 of the react js series yes the season 1 we can say that was till october last year where i covered a lot of basic stuff regarding react js and i posted about 24 25 videos now it's the season 2 so we will get into more advanced stuff where we will be using such third party services to create good react based projects and applications or we will get into more advanced stuff related to react js more complex stuff more problems that we get into when we are creating projects okay so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do if you're learning react js please follow the entire series it's an amazing series especially built for beginners i've tried to explain everything in details and i still answer to all the comments that you post so if you have any doubt please post your comment under that video and i will definitely get back to you thank you so much for watching the video see you in the next video